What's up everyone and welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next topic. We're now going to talk about relative rate of change in this video and to start it off what I want to do is begin with an example. So let's say that we have two different companies and let's say that uh, this company over here in one year it was making a hundred thousand in revenue and in the next year it's making a hundred and five thousand in revenue. Right, so year one, then year two. Now let's take another company. Let's say that they're making 5,000 in revenue, and then the next year, they're making 10,000 in revenue. Now notice that in both of these scenarios here, the absolute change in revenue is the same. It's $5,000. Right? This company's revenue went up by 5,000. This company's revenue here went up by 5,000 as well. The absolute change is the same. But the relative change is going to be a lot different. Because relative change just in general is basically the change in value over the initial value. Perhaps in previous uh, videos of mine you've seen this, I've uh, shown this as the new value minus the old value all over the old value or the initial value. And so if we apply this formula in this scenario, notice the change in value is the 5,000 and then the initial value was the 100,000. And so when you do this over here, you get 0 0.05 or a 5% change. If you take this, multiply it by 100. And then notice here the relative change. The, uh, the change is 5,000 and then the initial is 5,000. And so you end up getting one over here. If you want to get the percent change, you'd multiply that by 100 which would give you a 100% change. It basically doubled in revenue over here versus here, it only went up by 5%. Here, it went up by 100%. Here, it went up by 5%. And so a lot of times what you wanna look at, instead of the absolute change, you get a better perspective on what is going on when you're looking at the relative change. Now, when we take this here, this formula and let's say we apply it to functions because these were like specific scenarios with numbers but what if we were to apply it to a function if we wanted to know not just the change in the function but the relative change in function it's actually called the relative rate of change and the relative rate of change of a function is basically its derivative over the function at some kind of specific value for x. And this here actually is going to give it to you in decimals. Remember we got decimals initially for both of those examples. Same thing here, it's gonna give you the decimal rate of change. So if you wanna get the percentage rate of change, what you would do is you would take that decimal value and multiply it by so that would give you the percentage rate of change. The reason why I want to mention that is because when you're dealing with um, actual scenarios like this, you can tell like the 0.05, that's a decimal, um, per, uh, decimal rate of change. And so we have to multiply it by 100 to get the percentage rate of change. But when you're dealing with abstract functions with no sort of scenario behind them, Sometimes you tend to forget that you're actually working in decimals. So if you want to get the percent, you got to multiply it by 100. So let's show how this works through an example. So given a demand function p of x equals negative 0.8x plus 400 for x units sold, find the percentage change in revenue when there are 20 units sold. 
So notice we're given a demand function or the price function, but they're asking for the percentage change in revenue. So what we're gonna need is we're actually gonna need a revenue function. And we know that the revenue function is equal to the quantity sold, which in this case is just X, times the price per unit, which is this demand function, negative 0.8X plus 400, like that. And then we can expand this so we can distribute that X inside the bracket. So we would get the revenue function being negative 0.8X squared plus 400X. Right, so we have the revenue function. However, we need to find the percentage change in revenue when there are 20 units sold. So what we're gonna need is we're definitely gonna need the derivative or the marginal revenue function, which is the first derivative of the revenue function, which is gonna be negative 1.6x plus 400, like that. Now, remember, what does this tell us? The marginal revenue, if we plug in 20. That here is gonna tell us the absolute change in revenue from uh, 20 to 21 units sold. And it's gonna be approximate, right? Because really what this tells us is the uh, change from like 20 to 20.0001, something really close to 20. But since we're dealing with a work problem here and we're dealing with selling actual units, whole units, we're going from 20 to 21. So that's just gonna be an approximation. But the point is, is that the marginal revenue, it's given us that absolute change. But we want the relative change, in this case, the percentage change. So what we're gonna need is uh, we can first find what the relative rate of change is gonna be which is gonna be what? It's gonna be the value of that derivative over the value of the function at that same point, right? So if we plug in 20 into the marginal revenue function or the uh, derivative, we would end up getting um, 368. And if we plug in 20 for the overall revenue function, we would end up getting 7,600. And 80. And so when you do this in your calculator, you'd get approximately 0 0.0479. Now that's the uh, relative rate of change. We want the percentage rate of change. So you would take that, multiply it by 100. Sometimes you'll see textbooks take this formula, multiply it by 100. I'm just going to take that decimal, multiply it by 100 to get 4.79%. Don't forget that step of multiplying it by 100 if they're asking for the percentage change. Because sometimes here it's kind of obvious, you could tell it's, uh, it's a decimal, and so changing it to a percentage, 4.79%, but sometimes it won't be as obvious. Sometimes you might get something like 1.2 over here, let's say. And um, if you forget to multiply by 100, if you get that answer, you might think that's 1.2%, but in fact, you have to multiply by 100 and you would get 120%. That's what the answer would be, right? So sometimes it's not as obvious that it's in uh, decimals, so just don't forget that step of multiplying it by 100 if they're asking for the uh, percentage change, the percentage, uh, the percentage, uh, the percent relative rate of change. So what does this tell us over here? Remember this here told us the absolute change in revenue from 20 to 21 units sold. Well, this here is telling us the percent change in revenue from 20 to 21 units sold. And you can actually test that if you want. So if you remember, basically relative change, when we broke it down in words, what was it? It was basically the new value minus the old value over the 
uh, sorry, over the old value. And so what you can do is you could just use the revenue function is you can say the new revenue is going to be at 21 units sold, right? The next unit that's going to be sold. So you'd have R of 21 minus R of 20 all over R of 20. And you should get something fairly close to that same value, 4.79. This is going to be a decimal, then you're going to multiply it by 100. Again, it's not going to be exact because this is actually telling you the percentage uh, rate of change from 20 to something very close to 20, like 20.0001, right? So if you put like 20.0001 here and plug that into the revenue function, you'd actually get something closer to 4.79. But this should still give you something fairly close to 4.79. Maybe it'll be like 4.78, uh, 4.77, maybe even 4.8%. I don't know which one it's going to be. It's going to be one of those. But it should be something very close to 4.79. Notice here, we're not even using that marginal revenue. We're just using the revenue function, taking the new total revenue minus the old revenue, dividing it by the old revenue, and then we're getting that same approximate value, right? So that's an example of how you can take a scenario with functions and find, instead of finding the absolute change of a function, you could find the relative rate of change of a function.